All right, so this is a big topic to cover, and since I only have five minutes, I'm going to focus it around a few key learnings that I've had taking innovation accounting to practice. So when we first launch a product, lots of things can and do go wrong. The common tendency is to want to collect as much data as possible. But in today's world, where we can measure almost anything, we often end up drowning in a sea of information. This is what we all want our metrics dashboard to look like. We want to be that guy, Tony Stark, Iron Man. But in fact, this is what reality really looks like. <laughs> <laughs> so let's see how we fix this. The first thing is we, we don't really need lots of numbers. We really need a standard measure of progress. Much like we have standard financial statements to measure established companies, we need a set of standard metrics to be able to measure startups. At Spark 59, we standardize our measure of progress around five key macro metrics, first popularized, described by Dave McClure, which a lot of you in the room should already be familiar with. <coughs> Uh, and, and, and the uh, next thing that matters is not knowing, it's, it's not enough to know what to measure, you also need to know how. So ironically, as we add more customers, it actually gets harder, not easier, to measure progress. And there are two reasons for this. The first is the product is constantly changing. We're adding more features, running more marketing campaigns, we're adding more customers, it's constantly changing. The second reason is the more interesting customer events like revenue tend to be long life cycle events. This makes it harder to be able to determine what's really driving them. And this is where cohorts really help. So what cohorts do is they essentially let you group your customers and keep their events together so that you can more accurately derive cause and effect. So what I'm going to do next is walk through a small case study using one of the products we built, Lean Canvas, and show you how we put all of this to practice. So when we uh, finish baselining our product, we focus our work around a single key metric to improve. This is what our dashboard looked like from earlier this year. And based on these numbers, we decided to focus on first tackling the low-hanging fruit, the activation rate. So we started by mapping out our activation subfunnel, which as you can see here is a very long multi-step process. All of our initial experiments were geared around optimizing this flow. But no matter what we did, we weren't able to make a dent on the overall activation rate. The problem was that this, while the sub-funnel was telling us where people were dropping off, it wasn't telling us why. Our own experiments and our own guesses weren't working, so we decided to go to the people behind the numbers and simply ask them. And this is how we did that. We modified our dashboard to show us not only those users that were successfully activating, but also those that were getting stuck. We now had a way of identifying who these users were, but reaching out to them every single day over email quickly became tedious, and so we built an email autoresponder that looked something like this. Now, this single email campaign alone generated 20 to 30 email responses every single day, and it is through these responses that we were able to identify the top three reasons why people weren't activating. Now, you'll notice that none of these were usability issues where all of our initial efforts were directed. We were trying to optimize that flow. We decided to tackle the second item on this list, which was kind of the lower hanging fruit here, by building a seven day lean canvas course, which we set up as a split test. So can you guess what the results were? It sounds like a pretty good idea. Well, we, after several weeks of testing, we thought this would really have a major dent on the overall activation rate, but we measured no significant impact. In fact, if you look, less, if you look closely, there was even a, a slight dip in the activation rate. Made, made no sense whatsoever. Um, so normally, based on this data, the right thing would have been to kill off this experiment, except we left a way for people to leave comments below the video courses, and we got a lot of comments, and they were overwhelmingly positive. And it wasn't just through here, but people were emailing us. I r run into people who talk about this course, and they're grateful we did it. So for that reason, we didn't end up killing this experiment, and it actually forced us to revise our third principle. While we still focus a lot of our work around a single key metric to improve, we now monitor the entire customer lifecycle, especially when we run split test experiments. So this is what our modified experiments dashboard now looks like. And you can see it tells a more complete story about the customer lifecycle and how they behave uh, with new, new, pro new features we put out to them. So fast forwarding to today, we didn't end up killing that course. We actually invested in extending it further and we turn it into a, a longer sequence, a multi-week sequence. And since starting this campaign, we, we have been able to measure steady bumps in both retention and revenue. So the final key takeaway I want to leave you with is that metrics by themselves are not really enough. 
they can only tell you, they're only part of the solution and they can only tell you what's going wrong. But if you want to get to the real insights, you have to go beyond the numbers to the people behind them. That's all I have. Um, there's an ex if you'd like to see more, there's an extended version of this talk available at the link above. And thank you very much.